Apple just announced multiple sets of new AirPods in the AirPods 4 and the AirPods Max, but in my opinion, the AirPods Pro 2s are still the best option when it comes to headphones from Apple. While the AirPods Pro 2s are a couple of years old now, there's been a host of new features and updates added, some that we saw trickle out shortly after the Pros 2 were released, and some that were more recent alongside the launch of iOS 18. Today, I want to dig into the Pro models a little bit more and really the whole lineup of AirPods and go through those updates and touch on exactly why the AirPods Pro 2s are still the best option for a lot of people. So if you're looking at the current AirPods lineup and you're not quite sure what to choose from or you're just curious to see how far everything in the Pro models has progressed, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I bought the second generation AirPods Pros on launch two years ago, and they've quite honestly been the best set of earbuds that I've owned. I use them every day around the house, when I work out or run and on calls, and they've been great for all those things. When they released, they had and still do have the best noise cancelling that I've personally tried in earbuds. The sound quality is outstanding, and there's of course the seamless ease of use within the Apple ecosystem. But unlike a lot of tech products, they've actually gotten even better over time. Since coming out in September of 2022, they've added quite a few new audio features, and you'll find a lot of those are in the new AirPods 4s as well. So I think it's worth just briefly going over what those features are and how they work, just to get an idea of how much the pros have improved, starting with adaptive audio. Now, lots of headphones have had both noise cancelling features to block out surrounding noise and transparency features to let sound in, which the pros have. But with iOS 17 last year, Apple introduced adaptive audio, which essentially combines the two, where the noise control is based on the level of noise in your environment and the type of noise as well. So say if you're somewhere with a lot of constant background noise from an air conditioner or something, adaptive audio will automatically filter that out but it will also elevate noises like cars honking or sudden noises that might be important for you to hear. That turns on or off by either holding down on the touch control on the stem of your earbud or by going through the AirPod settings within the settings menu. And you can customize how much noise you'd like to filter through within here as well. You'll see a couple of other things grouped in with adaptive audio and settings that were also introduced in iOS 17, like conversational awareness and personalized volume. Conversational awareness can be handy as it lowers volume levels and background noise and elevates voices when someone is talking to you or you start talking to them. So it's kind of like another form of adaptive audio. Personalized volume, on the other hand, is supposed to adjust volume levels of media in response to your environment, but I don't really find that to be useful and it tends to be more annoying than anything. So I usually just keep that turned off. That stuff came last year, but this year with iOS 18, AirPods Pro 2s added voice isolation when on calls to reduce background noise and improve voice clarity through machine learning, and enabled some really neat interactions with Siri where you could nod or shake your head for hands-free controls like answering or ignoring calls. iOS 18 also added a game mode this year that will decrease latency with AirPods while gaming from an iPhone or an iPad. There's now better voice quality in games, and game developers can now tap into personalized spatial audio for games. Spatial audio has always been great to have on the pros, and with things like the Apple TV, the AirPods Pro 2s are great to use while watching content, as it does sound like you're listening on a much more expensive audio system, so to see that expand into gaming is fantastic. Finally, there were even more updates added at this year's September Apple event that are exclusive to the AirPods Pros, starting with hearing protection, which is on by default across all listening modes. That is essentially a form of noise cancellation where the ear tips create more of a passive noise reduction, and the H2 chip in the AirPods filter out louder noise 48,000 times a second, which is kind of wild. Apple references using this at events or concerts to protect your hearing and more everyday stuff like taking the subway or mowing the lawn. And there are quite a few people who already do utilize AirPods Pros in that way. There's also some hearing health features that you'll get if you live in the US that unfortunately we don't get here in Canada, but According to Apple, should roll out to over 100 countries sometime in the near future, with the two main things being a hearing test to see how good your hearing actually is, and being able to use the AirPod Pro 2s as hearing aids, which I think is a great addition. 
Those are all software features that have been added within the last two years that weren't available when the second gen pros launched. And the only real hardware change that we've seen is the switch to USB-C charging a year ago. For me, that's pretty irrelevant because I've always charged my AirPods wirelessly, but looking at the hardware is the easiest way to differentiate between the AirPods lineup. And there are some important things to be aware of, especially on the new fourth gen AirPods. The battery is one of the biggest differences between the AirPods Pro 2s and the AirPods 4, where the Pros do have a longer battery life at six hours of listening time on the buds with ANC enabled. And the AirPods 4s top out at four hours with ANC turned on or five hours with it off or on the non-ANC versions. There are in fact two versions of the AirPods 4s, the ANC and non-ANC versions, where with the ANC version, you'll not only get noise cancellation, but all those features that I went over on the pros, like adaptive audio, transparency mode, conversational awareness, and you'll get wireless charging on the case with a little speaker inside for finding them through Find My, where the basic AirPods 4s don't. That being said, the wireless charging is a little bit different on the pro version because the 4s don't support MagSafe. So if you've got a vertical dock or a charger, you can't stick the AirPods 4s on like you can with the Pros. And there is one instance where Apple went backwards from the AirPods 3s, where the sensor that detects if the AirPods are in your ears was downgraded to an older style on the 4s. I personally can't use regular AirPods because they just don't fit me very well, which is obviously something else you'll have to look out for on regular AirPods, where some people really like them and some people don't, but if you want more of a full breakdown of the AirPods 4s, my friend Brad wrote a great review on them that I'll link in the description that gets into all the details. But there are just a couple of other distinctions between the 4s and the Pro 2s that you should be aware of. The 4s with ANC do not have the U1 chip in the case like the Pro 2s do, so you won't get as accurate Find My results. You don't get the conversation boost features, and the biggest one in my opinion is the AirPods 4s have a force sensor instead of touch on the stem, so there's no volume control like you have on the Pros. The AirPods Max are kind of a different animal as they're a completely different style of headphones with them being over ear, but I do just want to mention that they're the same model as they were previously, just with USB-C and some extra colors. They've retained the same H1 chip and internal, so you're not going to get most of the features that I've mentioned here today. And they still only have Bluetooth 5.0 versus 5.3 in the other models, which is pretty unfortunate given that they're priced at $549, which is $300 more than the Pros that are only $249. The base AirPods 4s are relatively cheap at only $129, where the ANC version is $179. And I would say the right choice for most people really breaks down into two things. One is going to be the fitment, where regular AirPods are going to be a lot more rigid than the Pros, but if you like that style and it works for you, you can save yourself a lot of money there. But the second thing is the feature set, and even if you get the AirPods 4 with ANC, you're still not going to have the volume control on the stem, there's no hearing health features, no MagSafe or ultra wide chip in the case, and the battery life is considerably lower than on the Pro models. How important all of these features are to you is really a personal choice, but for me, the sound and the noise cancellation that I get from the AirPods Pro 2s has been unmatched from any other earbuds that I've tried. And the fact that Apple has continually added upgrades over the years has been a pleasant surprise. So even though the AirPods 4s are the newest version out there, I'm still choosing the Pro 2s every time. But I just wanted to make a little video for anyone who is maybe on the fence and needed some context for what each of these has to offer. But if you have a preference for AirPods that's different from mine or anything else that you want to bring up that I did not go over today, please drop a comment down below. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video or you found it useful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me build an app that translates your voice into animal noises while you're on important calls, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next upload.